But we had, as I say, some very wonderful things happen at the Pilgrim House table, and one of them was a Baha'i who was a knight of Baha'u'llah from, where was it? The Orkneys, yes, the north of the islands north of the Great Britain, uh, Charles Dunning. And we knew that he was coming. We knew that he was one of the knights of Baha'u'llah, but in those days, the, the, the uh, airplane service was only once, perhaps, or twice a week from different places. So we never knew exactly when the pilgrim was coming. We knew that they were coming the third week, say, of January, but we didn't know which day. So the doorbell of the pilgrim house rang, and Mr. I always told us afterwards, he went and opened the door, and he saw this little man standing there with a big, heavy turtleneck sweater and a mug, because really Charles had a face that was like a mug, and a little runt of a fellow. <laughs> and he thought that he was probably a bum. So he w th was going to say, you know, we, uh, we're not interested. And um, then he looked at him, and he knew we were expecting Charles Dunning. So he um, said, I'm Charles Dunning. He asked him who he was, said, I'm Charles Dunning. Well, then, of course, he was brought in and shown his room, and he came down to dinner with the guardian and so on. And the guardian was so entranced with that man. He was a very, very simple man. And as I say, Shogi Effendi sat here, and he put Charles there because Charles was the knight of Baha'u'llah. And he always put the prominent Baha'i here, for one, whatever they were, their position as a hand or a knight of Baha'u'llah or an elderly woman or whatever, they went there. So Charles, I'll be the head now, and Charles was sitting here and the guardian was there. And he just adored the guardian. And he, he leaned over like this. He said, guardian, <laughs> do you remember when you wrote that? You remember that? And his finger was under Shogi Fendi's <laughs> nose like that. And Shogi Fendi was enraptured with this man. So he leaned on the table like this, you see, smiling into Charles's face, and Charles's finger under his nose. Guardian, you remember you said that? Oh, it was so adorable. And then when we went home, Shogi Fendi said to me, oh, I like that man so much. He just loved Charles. That was very interesting, light on the Guardian. Then we had um, another Baha'i. He was the first Baha'i from America. And um, <laughs> <laughs> his name was Larry Houts. And he was of German uh, background, an American. And he was an insurance man, and a very successful one. And he was a member of the National Assembly of the Baha'is of the United States and Canada at that point. And um, Shogi Fendi sent a cable to the American NSA saying, inform the Baha'i world, because they were the correspondent for all these cables, except direct messages in Persian to Persia. But the whole outlet for the Baha'i world was American NSA. So he said, infer inform the Baha'is that the door pilgrimage is open. Well, Larry, being a member of the assembly, got terribly excited, and he went immediately and sent a cable asking for the privilege of pilgrimage. And um, then the phone rang a couple of days later, and the Western Union, a telegraph company, said, we've got a, a cable for you from Haifa. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And uh, he went and he got a pad and a pencil, and he told his wife to get on the uh, second telephone upstairs so she could hear this wonderful message from Haifa. And he said, all right, now read it to me was addressed to Mr. Houts and so on. It said, welcome, Shogi. <laughs> Very interesting. I mean, this was the Guardian, you see. Instead of saying long speech in one paragraph because you're the first, he just said, welcome. You know, you're welcome. And then he signed it, Shogi, which is the way he shined up everything, and that was that. But uh, it was really marvelous. So Larry came, and um, he had on a tie that was a style in America. They had these very, very big ties <laughs> in those days, very wide ones. And this was hand-painted. 
And it was a painting of an Arab in the desert sitting under a palm tree. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> so he was sitting opposite the guardian, and I, I saw this happen, you know, and Shoki Fendi, I would go to that <laughs> time, immediately remember his dignity and sit up straight and, you know, go on with his lecture on the Baha'i Fendi. <laughs> Look again. <laughs> I know the guardian used to wake up very early, which I deplored because he didn't get enough sleep and he had such tremendous amount of nervous strain and anxieties and responsibilities. But he would wake up about dawn and when he had finished seeing the pilgrims and we got home and he had got him to bed, it may have been, say, 10 o'clock, so he didn't have very much rest. And, of course, as the years went by, he had much less rest because the demands on his time were greater and uh, the expansion of the cause um, constantly preoccupied Shoghi Effendi. And in the end, he worked all the time. He worked in, in London till um, the day that he died. A hundred years ago, this time, the blessed beauty, he announced, all lovers of the divine countenance, where are ye? How earnestly we wish that the beloved Shoghi Effendi were with us. I feel that Shoghi Effendi is watching us now. <laughs> <laughs> 